Getting better looking footage is a combination of things from the camera sensor, lens, lighting, and data. One of the best ways to capture that data for color correcting and grading is with this one setting, S-Log3. I'm gonna show you what it is, what it does, and how I use it. All while breaking it down for you so that you can use it in your own work and help you translate your creative vision through your video. I've been using the default picture profile settings on my camera for many years and still do. But when I know I'm gonna shoot a beautiful scene and want to have more flexibility for creative control in post, I start shooting with log, which is short for logarithmic profile. If you have a camera like the Sony FX30, we're able to use a LUT to preview our final image. Or you could use Gamma Assist display under the setup tab of the main menu. You'll find it under display option and just have to set it for S-Log3. Although we have the FX30 today, you could also try doing the same with your Sony A6400, A6700, A7 IV, A7S III, and other cameras in the Sony line. Not all of them, but many of them. All right, let's break down how we'll use it, and then we'll see more of the samples and grading it towards the end. But first, let's begin turning on S-Log3 by switching our camera to video mode. For the FX30, we have the mode button, but perhaps you have a dial on your setup. Then in the menu, under main menu, if we scroll all the way down, we can go to log shooting settings and select flexible ISO. I've been using sgamut3.cine slash slog3, but if you don't have the FX3, FX30, no big deal. You may have a picture profile button for your function menu, or you may just have to dig under the main menu, go under the exposure color menu, go to color or tone, picture profile, and then picture profile eight or PP8. And this will have your S-Log3 with s 3cine For the crop sensor cameras, I generally overexpose my shot by 1.3 to two stops. And usually I'll have my metering mode set to multi, which is the default setting. So don't worry about changing this if you've never changed it before. Just know that with this setting, the camera will measure the light and the different aspects of the scene and judge the proper exposure. So when we look at this number down below, next to where it says MM, we want this to be anywhere from 1.3 to 2.0. Just make sure that the 2.0 isn't blinking because that means that we're actually overexposed greater than two and our highlights will be blown out. And we don't want that because we won't be able to bring back those details in post. Here's how the image looks when we expose evenly and when we expose a couple stops higher. This is evenly exposed straight out of camera. And then this other shot is one stop overexposed. All right, now this is two stops overexposed. You notice that the details are cleaner in the shadows when overexposed. But hey, if you're running and gunning, don't beat yourself up about it because we could always add some noise reduction in post. Others in the community, like myself, may overexpose for S-Log3 a stop or two when shooting full frame. But I'll let you be the judge for what is suitable for you. When I've done it, it hasn't given me any issues and I haven't had any complaints. It's easier to overexpose and then bring down your exposure in post than to underexpose and then bring up your overall image exposure in post because that latter part will introduce noise. But what if the scene changes often and you want that assurance of being able to save all the details in your highlights without having to stare at the metering numbers go up and down as you're shooting? Well, in this case, we could turn on the histogram and look at things visually by hitting the display button on the D tab. And you just have to hit up. This way, you wanna be able to make sure that your data isn't hitting the top right corner or just the top of your histogram. So feel free to close down your aperture or even lower your ISO to maintain at least 1.3 to 1.5 stops over for your different scenes. All right, now that we got our clips, let's go to the editing portion. All right, so we have three different samples today and I'm using Final Cut Pro and I'm gonna demonstrate how I edit my S-Log3 footage. All right, so just looking on the screen, we have here our windows to be able to see our exposure. We have the Luma waveform here and RGB overlays. You see the labels, cool. And I was able to get that by holding Command 7. So that's how you get it to pop up easily. Over here, I have the inspector and I have this color tab shown and I went ahead and just selected color board. So our footage is desaturated, doesn't have anything. Let's go ahead and add some life back into our shot. 
We have a violinist here at the church. Let's dial in our exposure a little more. So we can go ahead and stretch this a little bit down with our shadow side. We have the ceiling up here up to 100 on the left hand side. So we can go ahead and bring up. There we go. Just touching. Okay, maybe we can bring down our shadows a little more. And maybe we'll lean towards bringing our mid-tones down a little more as well. Okay, cool. In regards to our saturation tab, we can go ahead and bring in some. This will affect all the colors here. All right, that's a little much. Find that it's very yellow. We just want enough here. Bring that shadows down a little more. Let's bring down our mid-tones a little more too. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. We just gotta massage pieces of our footage to make it look nice. Yeah, I like the look at that. I feel like it's pretty balanced. We could mess with the color temperature of our shot, but I do my best to get the right Kelvin dialed in when I shoot this footage. So we're gonna keep it like this. And we'll just go ahead and copy this and apply it to our second footage here by using, we're gonna use Option Command V Cool beans, all right, cool. I think that looks great. So in review, so again, we just brought up our highlights and we brought down our shadows and then brought down our mid-tones to be able to dial in just enough contrast. And we just brought back some life with some saturation. All right, next up, we got a family outside. We got some B-roll for an interview that I was doing. And so instead of using a the regular sliders and such that we have here, we're gonna go up here and we're gonna use color curves. So in a similar way, I was messing with the Luma, the brightness, and I wanna go ahead and just play with the middle point here. Luma, bring that down. Cool. Gonna dig in our shadows there. And we're gonna take another point and we're gonna bring up our highlights. So this way we can get uh, more of a gradient going on. Actually, maybe just a little too punchy. I'm just gonna bring it forward a little bit, bring it back rather, and then bring it down. I found this kind of towards golden hour. So let's make some color pop. Gonna add a lot of color here. Bring that up. Okay, we're already at 100. A little more. How does our skin look? Maybe just a little more. Oh, that's it. Zoom out of here. Now while we're here, let's go ahead and play with some greens. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Hue and Saturation Curves. I'm gonna grab this eyedropper tool and click over here on the greenery. So it's more like a green yellow. I'm just gonna play with that a little bit. Yes, I am one of those people who like those desaturated greens. So I'm bringing this down. I'm gonna do the same thing with Hue versus Saturation, which will choose the Hue and I will play with the saturation. I know, like winter green, right? Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Of course, there's more room to play, but this is just for getting started. You know, we won't spend this whole tutorial playing with this footage. Okay, gonna copy that with Control or Command C, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit Option Command V. Okay, this is a little bit darker. I shot this a little bit later. And then same thing over here. We have our brother over here. Oops. We have our brother over here backlit. All right, see how our highlights over here are pretty much blown out. Let's go back to our curve here because this will look different for every piece of footage that you have. See, we have some room there. Let's close that down a little bit. And our color curve. You're a little too punchy. Ooh. That's fine. Yeah, buddy. A little too dark. A little, a little darker than this, but he's backlit. I'll show you that shadow side. Yeah, looks good. Looks good to me. For our last sample here, we have my wife and my friend, and we're in New York. And these are more like vloggish styles. It's just for documentary purposes. And this time we're gonna go ahead and mess with color wheels. Again, 
these things could be dialed in a little bit more as far as what tools we use, but this is just to help you get exposed to using this part of your software. So in a similar way here, we got our global, which affects the whole image, highlights, midtones, shadows. I like to bring down my shadows first. There we go. Not too, don't really want to touch that down below. And we can go ahead and bring up our highlights and give it some more contrast here. We're backlit here. I want to get a little bit more of those shadows. We got the details, so don't worry too much. And we're only touching the right side of these color wheels. Now to bring in more saturation, we're just bringing saturation. We're going to affect the whole. So that's global. We're going to mess with this left arrow here and bring it up. Great. Cool. Maybe I want it a little bit more punchy so I can bring down that a little more. Don't know how I feel about her skin tones. Maybe I could just mess with that a little bit. Anyway, this is not a full on color tutorial, but this is just giving you the gist of what we can do. All right, that's how our colors look. If we want, we can go ahead and mess with some colors more and just bring in another set of color wheels and introduce some teal gray, put some blue in our shadows right there, something like that. Just real rough. And our mid-tones for our skin, we can add some orange, pull towards the left, top left. Something subtle, nothing crazy. If you really want, you can really mess with this saturation slider. The shadows, or the mid-tones. You know, I don't need to go too crazy. You can bring that back a little bit more on the wheel. All right, same thing over here. We got a different scene. We're at the little island. Bring back the color wheels. Bring down the shadows here while looking at our waveform here in the top corner. And then we'll bring up the highlights. And bring down the, the midtones. Cool, cool, cool. And then bring back some life into these trees over here to the left hand side. Looks just about right. Click, cool. Press play. Wonderful. Although we're kind of clipping here. Let's see if we can bring down our highlights some more. Nope, that's about as much detail. When you see this line over here, that pretty much seems like we just clipped. This is the clip. We clipped our highlights there. Am I, am I so worried about it? Not really. Um, again, this is more of like a vlog type. I'm not gonna drive myself crazy about missing those things. All right, shooting a movie here. We got most of our details in the shots. Our shadows look great. Maybe for next time, I'll bring down the exposure a little bit more. When we're running and gunning and we turn our camera again, we try to do our best and capture what we can. Skies will be our enemy when clipping our highlights, but this is the reality of it. Now you got S-Log3 down, but if you're looking to learn more about your camera, consider this video over here.